Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, you're most welcome to uh, my channel. And uh, today I just want to share with you one simple scripture from Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And it says that for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So much to really dissect from here. Number one is that sin is bad. And the evil of sin in this particular verse is shown is the in the consequence of sin. So sin has a consequence, which the Bible calls a wage. Sin has a wage. There is a payment for sin. There's a price for sin. And it says that the price is death. The wages of sin is death. Now, quite a number of times, some people may think that, well, I've sinned and I've never died. So, what do you mean? The wages of sin is death. What do you mean? I've not died and I've been committing sins. No, there are different kinds of death. So that's one thing we need to understand. And normally when we talk of death, people only think of one type of death. And that is the separation of the soul, of the spirit from the body. So you, you stop breathing, your heart stops beating, and you're buried. That's what people think death is but there are many types of death that's not the only death for example in the in the in the book of revelations it says that the lake of fire those will be will be thrown in the lake of fire that is the second death so that's another kind of death where you die without dying you die without ceasing to exist. You exist, but you're dying. You're in death. You exist in death. So there is death that is separation of the, of the soul from the body. And then there is death that is separation of the whole you from God. It's, it's another death. So when God told Adam and Eve that the day you eat of this fruit, you will die. Adam died. He experienced death. Though it was not, it was another kind of death, not the bodily death. But eventually the bodily death also came. But immediately Adam sinned, he died. He died. He died a certain kind of death. So for every sin we commit, he says that the wages of sin is death. There is death. But can be death in different kinds. And the ultimate death is the total and eternal separation from God. That's the ultimate consequence of of sin but before we experience before before we experience that ultimate uh, uh, consequence of sin the eternal separation of the sinner from God there are other kinds of deaths that a, a person who has sinned goes through 
can be death of marriage, death of an opportunity, death of health. Some people, their health dies because of sin. Death of wealth. The wealth can die because of sin, consequence of sin. Death of happiness. Death of a relationship. Death of family, harmony and unity and peace. Death of prayer life. Death of spirituality. Death of a virtue within you. All these are the kinds of death we experience, which all of them have a solution. And what's that solution? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus brings everything that has died because of sin back to life. Brings to life. even such a point that when we die there is a separation of the soul from the body that those who are believing in Christ there is a hope for resurrection a hope for resurrection so the wages of sin is death and death is in different categories there can be different degrees of death so every time you commit a sin the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But when you repent and receive of the Lord, you are revived. And he says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift. The gift. He did not say the wage of righteousness is eternal life. But he said the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So eternal life is not a wage. It's not a reward. It's a gift. But the gift is only accessed in Christ. So that's already the condition. It's a gift, yes. It's not a wage. It's a gift. But you must access it in Christ. Because that gift is only in Christ. So you must access it through Christ. In Christ. Through faith. And faith that is alive. That works in love through love. Faith that is not dead. The gift of God is eternal life. There is no work that man can do on earth, however good that work is, that is sufficient enough to merit, to cause eternal life to be given to you as a reward. That work doesn't exist. There is no work any human, a, 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 a man can do that can lead to the reward of eternal life. That work is not there. It doesn't exist. So what happens? Jesus, who is the only author and finisher of our faith, is the one who could do what we could not do. And in him, God gave us a gift the gift of eternal life that now we do not have to work our way to eternal life but that we have to have faith in Jesus Christ and we receive that gift so the work that we have to do is to believe in Jesus Christ and when I say believe 
that is a pregnant thing. Today, so many Christians, they think that to believe just means to confess Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and that is all. He says, James says, that you believe that God exists, you do well, but even the devil believes and he trembles. What does that mean? It means that the devil believes that better than you, and yet he does not receive, he does not receive the gift that comes through believing. So believing is not just the awareness, to be aware that Jesus is the Son of God. To believe in God means that to believe in God means to keep, to obey His biddings, to obey His commands. And it is in the walking of the commands that tells that we believe in God. And when we obey the commands of the Lord, we're not doing something to earn eternal life. No, that is the means of access. The commandment of God is a means of access. The commandment of God is a means of access through Christ to receive of the gift that he has given. All, every gift that God wants to give to the world, he has given in Christ. And for the world to access that gift, they must believe in Christ. And to believe in Christ is not just a, a, a confession of mouth. It is also a work of life. A walking in his command and to walk in the commands of Jesus Christ is not the same as walking in the law of Moses but the commands of Jesus Christ the command of grace the beatings of grace are a means of access to every gift that God has given us so you want eternal life God has given it to you but it is in Christ and to receive it in Christ you must believe must have faith in Christ. And to have faith in Christ, it means to believe that he is the son of God who came on earth in flesh, was killed, died and was buried and he rose again. Now you sit at the right hand of the Father and still mystically uh, 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 present with the church and he has had mercy on you. He forgives you your sins. You confess and repent and then you follow. You follow what he tells you. No Christians don't be don't never be deceived by the doctrines of today. Someone, you cannot be a believer in Jesus Christ when Jesus says that unless you're baptized, you cannot receive the kingdom of God, but you want to get your own, you, you reject that. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. But, but you, you don't keep the commandments of God. He says, if you must be my disciple, carry, you don't carry the cross. And you want to claim, you want to claim discipleship, you want to claim Christianity, you want to claim Christ and every gift that comes through faith in him. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. To believe in Jesus Christ is not only to confess but to walk, to live in the beatings of grace, in the beatings of Christ. So heaven is a gift, eternal life is a gift, salvation is a gift. Salvation is a gift of God to men but there is an access to all these gifts and the access is Faith. Faith is believing in obedience. 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 I hope this short video has blessed you.